Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to our discussion on this uh, second exemption within the new standard of uh, leasing where you talk about uh, under what circumstances does the lease uh, does, uh, you know not into uh, uh, does the lease not go into the balance sheet uh, in form of an asset and the corresponding lease liability. We say that uh, a lessee may not apply the requirements of the standard to leases to which underlying asset is of low value okay now there are, there are a couple of things that we must talk about with respect to the low value part of it we say that the low value of an asset uh, in, in in isolation per se right something that we want to kind of talk about in the in the concluding remarks here we'll discuss that in a minute but precisely when I say low value the focus of the standard is to look at the absolute value and not relative value okay when i say relative value i'm saying in relation to the materiality part of it okay which also means by the way if i'm if i'm a company like apple incorporation which could be having a balance sheet size of you know 500 600 billion dollars and I'm taking a car on lease and the value of the car is say around say around ten thousand dollars okay uh, it doesn't matter anymore because in terms of the absolute value ten thousand dollars may not be considered as a low value item okay and that's where this lease no matter how small it is in relation to the balance sheet size it's it's not it's not going to be expensed off as an as a rental cost but that the right of use asset and the corresponding lease liability will will certainly sit in the balance sheet there okay that's that's where the the you know the the standard goes that far okay importantly we are saying again that this low value the absolute value is considered not not on the basis of again what is the what is the value of the asset uh, as you know as on the date of lease okay it could be a, it could be a second hand car for example right what matters is of course the value of the asset under consideration if it were a new asset okay of course in this case the 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 prudence goes goes even that far where you might be taking a car on hire i'm using the cars example once again you might be taking a car on hire and it's, it's a second hand car and uh, you just happen to take that car on lease for maybe three years time okay and it's out of five five years of its remaining life so you take it for two years or three years and the the, the exposure under the lease is is virtually insignificant right it's, it's too small a value but again the value of the car when it stood new if it is not a low value asset again this exemption is not available to the lessee right which means that the entire leased asset the right of use asset and the corresponding lease liability sits in the balance sheet there and then cannot be cannot be avoided okay importantly the standard says that this this choice can be made the exemption on lease to lease basis can be weighed okay which means that precisely if i'm for example for the sake of a number i'm saying that there could be very small items or when i say small items i intend to say low value items like like you know computers furniture and fixture right very very specific items on which this exemption is, is, is virtually available, not, not otherwise to any other asset. So if these small items are taken on lease, then this exemption can be availed and does not matter considering this aspect of lease to lease basis. If I'm taking, let's say, you know, 100,000 computers and higher and which are independent of each other, right? It does not matter. It does not matter at all that the, the the total value of these 100,000 computers could be could be could be a very high value could be a material amount as such right so we look at from a lease to lease perspective and that is where 
we go to the the, the basis of conclusions where we say that an, an underlying asset can be of a low value only if a lessee can benefit from the underlying assets on its own. It's like as good as an independent asset or together with other resources readily available with the lessee. Okay, if, if the lessee already has some other assets, some other infrastructure, some other setup available and you're taking another some furniture kind of a thing on, on these then, then that is kind of a low value asset. But it means that it is not, it's not uh, you know the asset is, is 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 independently capable of you know creating creating value to the lessee and of course we say that it is not highly dependent or highly interrelated with other assets okay taking a computer on higher is one thing taking a computer on these is one thing but if the computer has to be necessarily connected to a machine to run the entire machine for production facility so essentially we're talking about the computer as a as a, as a trigger device, as a software, for example. Okay, so in that case, that that computer in itself is not an independent machine, but it is very much dependent or interrelated to that particular, you know, uh, equipment to which it is connected. So that is where you need to assess that this exemption would be would be virtually available to very limited number of items for 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 an entity, and accordingly. This exemption under para 5b of the leasing standard could be a very restricted uh, exemption for the purposes of accounting, right? So that's that's a, that's a brief, uh, you know, uh, discussion I wanted to do on the on the leases uh, uh, exemptions uh, together with us. So thank you very much once again for your time. Have a good day and take care. Bye.